Greetings, history enthusiasts. Today's video, somewhat spontaneously, delves into a captivating discovery named Tartaria. Intriguing theory questions the very foundation of the history we've been taught. So, let's dive into the fascinating realm of Tartaria. Tartaria, a conspiracy theory, suggests that the history we've been taught is largely a fabrication. This theory ventures into the realm of the unexplored, the unexplained, and the unconventional. It dares to question the accepted narratives, casting doubt on the very fabric of our historical understanding. In the heart of this theory lies the concept of Tartaria, a once mighty empire spanning across continents whose existence has allegedly been wiped from our history books. This supposed superpower is believed to have been at the helm of advanced technology and architectural prowess, far surpassing what was thought possible for the time. Now, you might be wondering, how could such an empire, so grand and advanced, simply vanish from our collective memory? The answer, according to the Tartaria theory, lies in the concept of fabricated histories and stolen cities. This theory suggests that key elements of our past have been deliberately altered or hidden to mask the true origins of our civilization. Take, for instance, major American cities like New York and Chicago, these bustling metropolises, with their towering skyscrapers and intricate infrastructure are traditionally believed to have been built by European settlers. But what if that's not the whole truth? What if these cities in all their grandeur were already present waiting to be discovered? The implications of such a claim are immense, challenging our understanding of history, culture and human achievement. If these cities did pre-exist, who built them? How were they constructed? And most importantly, why has their true history been obscured? Could major American cities like New York and Chicago have existed before European settlers? Underground tunnels in American cities such as Tampa and Chicago are considered by some as evidence of Tartaria. These elaborate subterranean networks hidden beneath our feet evoke a sense of mystery and intrigue. Are they merely remnants of a bygone era, or do they hint at a concealed history? Some theorists propose that these tunnels were part of a sophisticated infrastructure that existed long before European settlers arrived. They suggest that these structures weren't built, but rather uncovered, as if the cities we know today were simply built on top of older ones. What if these tunnels are remnants of these ancient cities? The enigma deepens as we delve into the purpose of these tunnels. Were they used for transport, for utilities, or perhaps for something more clandestine? The answers are elusive, adding fuel to the fire of the Tartaria theory. In the face of such questions, one cannot help but wonder why do these tunnels exist and what could they be hiding? The architecture of old buildings in American cities raises questions about their documented history and construction process. Let's take a walk through the corridors of time and stand before the Ponce de Leon Hotel in Tampa, for instance. This grand structure with its ornate detailing and imposing presence has stories etched in its bricks. But are these stories the same as the ones we've been told? Consider the architecture, the intricate design, the detailed craftsmanship, it's not just about aesthetics, it's about the knowledge and skills required to erect such a structure. Could this have been achieved with the technology and resources of the era? Or is there more to this tale than what's been documented? Now, let's question the narrative. The Ponce de Leon Hotel, like many other old buildings, has a rich historical backdrop. But is this backdrop entirely accurate? Is it possible that there's a chapter of its history that remains unspoken? Could these buildings have been standing tall before their recorded birth? As we delve deeper into the architectural wonders of American cities, we find more buildings that echo the same sentiment. Structures that seem too advanced for their time, too grand for the resources available. Buildings that seem to have sprung up from the ground, fully formed, with no clear indication of their construction process. The architecture of these buildings, their design, their craftsmanship, and their presence all point to a narrative that's different from what we've been taught. A narrative that suggests a history far more complex and intriguing than we've been led to believe. Are we missing a piece of the puzzle when it comes to the history of these buildings? Many downtown areas in America are said to have underground cities, with evidence of massive tunnel systems. Imagine a world beneath our feet, a network of tunnels and chambers forming a hidden city. These are not just mere subways or sewers, but intricate pathways that could have once bustled with life. Such a thought challenges our conventional understanding of history. It suggests that our ancestors were more advanced than we've been led to believe. Could it be that they were capable of constructing entire cities underground? This theory is not without basis. 
We have evidence of ancient civilizations like the Mayans and the Egyptians who built complex structures underground. So, the idea of hidden underground cities in America is not entirely far-fetched. The existence of these cities could point towards a more complex history than the one we've been taught. It might mean that there were civilizations before us who were wiped out, their cities buried under layers of earth, waiting to be discovered. Could these underground cities be remnants of a forgotten civilization? The authenticity of construction photos and the manipulation of historical photos have been called into question. Now let's delve into the realm of photography and its role in shaping our understanding of history. It's no secret that images can be powerful storytellers. But what if those stories have been tampered with or entirely fabricated? That's the question we're posing when it comes to historical construction photos. Consider the images documenting the construction of major American cities. They're presented as undeniable proof of their origins. But let's pause for a moment and entertain the idea that they might not be as authentic as we've been led to believe. What if they are, in fact, a grand illusion, a manipulation designed to conceal the truth? Imagine, for instance, a photo of a grand old world building under construction. We see workers in period attire, surrounded by scaffolding and construction materials. It's a snapshot of history, or so we think. But could it be possible that these scenes have been staged, their details carefully arranged to paint a particular narrative? Moreover, with the advent of technology, photo manipulation has become easier than ever. It's a common practice in today's digital age, but it's not a new phenomenon. Even in the 19th century, techniques such as photo retouching and montage were used to alter images. So, the question arises, could these techniques have been used to deceive us about the origins of our cities and buildings? And what about the ancient manuscripts and maps depicting castles in America? They predate the modern construction photos, and some argue are more trustworthy. Could these older sources reveal a history that's been hidden from us? As we delve further into these questions, we find ourselves in a maze of possibilities, where every turn could lead to a different understanding of our past. It's a reminder that history, as we know it, might just be a carefully constructed narrative, and the photos we trust could be part of that grand design. Can we trust the photos that have shaped our understanding of history? The prevalence of great fires in major American cities has led some to suggest they were not accidental. A closer look at the historical records of old world buildings may shed some light on this. Take instance the Great Chicago Fire of the late 19th century, a calamity that left a significant part of the city in ruins, obliterating a large number of architectural marvels of that era. Officially, the fire's cause is attributed to a mishap in a small barn. Yet, some question. How could such a colossal fire result from a single barn incident? Could it have been a deliberate act? An attempt, perhaps, to wipe out evidence of a civilization not aligned with the accepted historical narratives. Fires of such magnitude have occurred in other American cities, too, often followed by a rapid architectural transformation. Were these fires accidents, or were they a deliberate attempt to erase history? Secret societies, particularly Freemasons and Oddfellows, are believed to have had a significant influence on American history. Often shrouded in mystery, these organizations have been entwined with our past in ways that may baffle and intrigue us. The Freemasons, for instance, have been at the heart of countless conspiracy theories, with their intricate rituals and secretive gatherings. It's a society that has counted among its members numerous influential figures, from founding fathers to presidents, raising questions about their potential impact on the course of history. The Oddfellows, on the other hand, are less well-known but equally fascinating. Dedicated to philanthropy and fraternity, they have left their mark in the form of orphanages, hospitals, and other charitable institutions. Yet there's an enigmatic aura surrounding their activities, leading some to wonder if their influence extends beyond these noble causes. Both societies are often associated with symbols and architecture that can be found in our cities, hinting at their presence and involvement in the shaping of our urban landscapes. From the all-seeing eye to the square and compass, these symbols are not just decorative elements but potential clues to a hidden narrative. But what if these societies had a role beyond what's recorded in our history books? What if their influence reached into the very fabric of our society, affecting how our cities were built, how our history was shaped, and how our collective memory was formed? Perhaps these secret societies were not just fraternal organizations, but the hidden hands guiding the course of our history shaping our cities, and weaving a narrative that we've come to accept as truth. 
Could these societies have played a more significant role in our history than we've been led to believe? The founding of orphanages and asylums in early American cities by secret societies raises many questions. These institutions, often found tucked away in the heart of bustling cities, carry with them a dark and mysterious past. Let's consider this. Were these orphanages and asylums merely benevolent establishments providing care and shelter for the less fortunate? Or was there a more sinister motive at play? The theory of Tartaria suggests the latter. It posits that these establishments were strategic tools used by secret societies to repopulate cities and perpetuate a manipulated version of history. Picture this. Orphanages, filled to the brim with impressionable young minds, served as the perfect breeding ground for shaping a new generation's understanding of history. The narrative fed to these children could have been carefully crafted, filled with tales of a world that fit the secret society's agenda. Asylums, on the other hand, housed those who society had deemed unfit. Is it possible that these institutions were used to control the narrative further? By labeling those who questioned the established narrative as insane, secret societies could have effectively silenced any dissent. The stories spun within the walls of orphanages and asylums would have been passed down through generations, perpetuating a version of history that may be far from the truth. It's a chilling thought that our understanding of the past could have been shaped within the confines of these institutions. So, we're left with a thought-provoking question. Could these institutions have been used to shape our understanding of history? The Tartaria theory, while controversial, forces us to question the history we've been taught. This journey has taken us through the shadowy corridors of the past, probing the origins of our cities and the veracity of the narratives we've been handed down. We've delved into the enigma of underground tunnels, challenged the authenticity of historic photographs, and questioned the purpose of the grand fires that reshaped our cities. We've even looked into the influence of secret societies and the intriguing role of orphanages and asylums in our history. Certainly, these theories may seem far-fetched, but they do offer an alternative perspective, urging us to question more, to dig deeper. They remind us that history isn't always as it seems and that it's healthy, even necessary, to question the narrative we're given. As we wrap up, remember this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to discover, to question, and to learn. Remember, history is often written by the victors. So always question, always research, and never stop learning.